Hello, everybody out there, beautiful humans. My name is Mod Sun, M O D S U N. It stands for Movement on Dream, Stand Under None. I am on the Zach Sang Show. It is the greatest day of my life, not only because I woke up this morning, but I am on my favorite couch in the world. I just had the greatest interview I've had, I think, ever ever i can confidently say ever we talked about my brand new album god save the teen which is out now and uh we got very deep there was lots of smiles and um i'm not gonna lie you're gonna see it i definitely started crying at one point in this interview so it's definitely worth turning into um or tuning into edit that out put this one in tuning into um we're just having fun man greatest day ever i love you very much thank you for having me on beautiful humans here we go mod son on the Zach Sang Show. Hello, beautiful human. Thanks for clicking on our conversation with Mod's son, God Save the Teen. That is his album out now. We're going to talk all about it. We're going to talk life, Avril Lavigne, and everything in between. I'm excited for you to be here. And this interview with Mod is being delivered to you by GoPuff. Come on, GoPuff. Everybody needs something delivered, so why not GoPuff it, right? Try it out today. Link in the description below to download the app. Plus, use my code Zach10 when you're checking out, and you can save $10 off your first two orders. Go puff it. Whatever you need delivered right to your door pretty much instantly, from home goods to electronics to booze to snacks, whatever your heart desires, they got you covered. Go puff it. Try it out today. Mod Sun, he has a lot to say. So let's hang out. You want to know something? You know that jack of all trades is a master of none? That is quote? true. Okay. Yeah. Do you know what the full quote is? No. The full quote is a Shakespeare quote, and it's a jack of all trades is a master of none, but a master of, n- or, but a master of none is often better than a master of one. That's huh. the full quote. And they fucked everyone in the world by just cutting it in half. Yeah, which, by the way, paraphrasing and doing that, uh, strategic editing has really shaped so much of, Dude, like, weird social discourse. My whole life, I yeah. thought it was shitty to want to do so many things. And the whole quote is actually saying it's better to want to do a lot of things than to try to just be good at one. But by That's the, way, the full quote. No, it, it, it's a challenge. Are you okay? Oh. But, but by the way, Chad, you know, it's so funny. I literally just had this conversation this morning about wanting to do a bunch of stuff. Yeah. And then, at the same time, having to balance but i do believe that when you challenge your brain to do a bunch of different shit not not you know with the right amount of stuff that is stimulating everything does have the opportunity to rise you know a rising tide floats all boats in so many different fucking ways Mm -hmm. but i'm stimulated i'm on i'm like thinking in new ways you know and i think those thought patterns and the fact that i'm subjecting myself to so much new so many new challenges helps me you know take on what i have done forever and it Different way. Yeah. Maybe a better way. I don't know. It is a better way. It is. But the world tried to make you think that it wasn't. Truth. That you're only supposed to focus on one thing. That's why I didn't want to be an athlete. Because athletes are like, you can only be a pro at one sport. You can't be a pro at all of them. (laughs) Was there one point in your life, Mazan, where you thought that you could actually be a professional athlete? I was nasty at hockey, bro. Really? Yes, I was a goalie. I grew up in Minnesota. Sick. I was like a really good goalie. So and I played lacrosse. I was good at lacrosse, but I was really good at goalie. That's like really incredible hand-eye coordination. To yeah, eat both those sports. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. gnarly, and I, that's what I wanted to do for the first part of my life. Like, was be an athlete. That's what I thought I was going to be, and then it turned into like, I don't want to be competing with even my teammates to be the best on the team, to be mm-hmm. the best all the time. I wanted to turn into something that was like a, you know, it's a team sport, so it's like. You can blame other people for losing. I wanted to do something that was like I could only be 100% responsible 100% of the time. I respect that because then there's no sharing of blame or burden. Yeah. And accountability's on you. Yeah. Even though music, there's so much out of your control, but also so much in your control. Well, yeah. Yeah. You take, I mean, of course, there's, there's a way to blame things that happen in the industry, but... If you're a true artist, you take on those burdens yourself. Yeah. And you try to let it push you and challenge you. The whole goal is like as a as a musician is to to impress yourself. That's the whole goal, right? It's like it it doesn't matter if you know the crazy thing is like 
they say as an artist not to like pick your singles or not to like think you know your best songs but it doesn't matter if someone tells you something's amazing if you don't truly think it is you know that's just the way you're gonna look at it you can't let someone's not gonna convince you that you did something amazing without you actually thinking that has have there ever been moments where you didn't think something was amazing but somebody else really believed that it was and you chose not to release something yeah, and quite the opposite, too, where I've had things, to, you know, and, and look, dude, I, I'm I'm so okay with being a hypocrite sometimes. So on the contrary to what I just said, I've also had people say something is amazing and me be like, really, it is? And then I release it and it does do that way, you know? Yeah. But in my head, I still am going, okay, I think that this is what I think when I really connected to something. And that's the things that I feel most proud of. Which are sometimes, it's so much like about what this new album is. It's like releasing it with no singles. That is so taboo right now. You know, I, I was really surprised uh, uh, by that. But by the way, uh, hi, beautiful human. I'm Zach. That's Santa. We welcome <laughs> to the studio for the first time ever officially. Mod son. Hey. Yes, yes. In a new studio. And this is what happens when you have real conversations. You don't even know when you start. Yeah, I love it. Um, yeah. Sorry, I know Dan Hi, beautiful it. humans. My name is Mod son. I am on literally, I think, my favorite show on the internet. I, I actually love you guys so much. And I think out of anyone who sat on this couch, I can actually confidently say i have watched more episodes than everyone else oh jeez that really <laughs> you know it's great Thank too so to much. start it off Love you. you know what's great is like so as someone that's a host of a show that brings people on yeah. maybe you think that people tune in to watch the person sitting on the couch i tune in to watch you guys now that <laughs> You can make me blush. I, I watch very, episodes of people you. that I do not know at all, which is kind of the point, right? Yeah, but and by the way, it's something that we don't really do very well. So to find out that somebody actually watches for us <laughs> means the world. And it like, I, no, I, I, we I see your comments every time you comment <laughs> see, on yeah, the you, video. You do comment on them. <laughs> see? Because yeah. I watch them all, even when it's You're someone amazing. that I, that I, I like, and, and I, enjoy, I mean, I love hearing um, what other artists think. So... Uh, it's great either way. I pick up something from every episode, but I watch for you guys, man. I journalism, journalism is making a giant comeback right now. We're in the middle of so many things mm -hmm. where it's like we're rebuilding. It, it, it could be destroyed or it could be rebuilt right now. I think you guys are a hundred percent um, rebuilding journalism uh, that, in this that, world. That, you know, it, that means the world because you know I do think all the time, and, and, and obviously there's so much to discuss, and even the conversation we were just on is so. Uh, Talking about making music for you, I, we'll, we'll get into it. But I <laughs> am interested in your thoughts on culture because yeah. there is something right now to this idea that w who and what is a tastemaker in the year 2023? Who in where is the main source for you to be introduced to music that you may not get anywhere else? Like, we are in a ginormous media shift mm -hmm. where you think one thing may be the answer for a little bit and it ends up, you know, lasting for shorter time than you think. And I'm shorter than ever. Yeah. Like, and I'm talking about TikTok, right? Like TikTok was the place for records. It still is a great place to start records, but by the way, it's a place where you get such a tiny snippet of a record that doesn't, doesn't determine a lasting long-term hit or, you know, and, and by the way, like there's great, great music that never breaks on fucking TikTok because it's not built that way or it doesn't hit that way. So, Going to the first thing that you mentioned, who is the tastemaker right now? I think the beauty, so I'm always going to try to find the beauty in everything. So let's let's go specifically to TikTok. The beauty is that the tastemaker is in the hands of the listener, the yeah, consumer the now. That's who's blowing up a record. It's no longer some suit who's 60 years old saying, no, let me press the button on this. It is legitimately like the, 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 uh, the control has been taken away from them. Mm-hmm. And it's now the consumer, the listener, who is saying, no, this is what we like and this is what we're going to get behind. Which is, I, I don't know, potentially the first time in music history? Totally. Right? Totally. So it's a beautiful thing. Um, the young generation is so inventive. I, we're talking about being a jack of all trades. I mean, these kids being the filmer, the lighting person, the writer of what they're doing, the fearlessness of getting in front of a camera. These are all great, great things. Now, the downfall on the other side of it is that we are championing trends and yeah. people copying each other. 
That is essentially what TikTok is. This thing is popular. So if you do this, you are going to get popular as well, which I'm a firm believer in in the fight for um, if originality can exist in that way. You know, we're all we're all we're all recycling something. You know? I mean, they say Shakespeare is plagiarized. There, there you go. And Shakespeare also, speaking of the jack of all trades, started as someone who lifted the curtains, who right. did the lighting, who did the writing, who did every single aspect of it. Those are heroes to me. Someone who reverse engineers something. They see the end goal totally. and then they try to reverse engineer it and figure out everything inside it and make it work for them. And by the way, like uh, our generations, the younger generations filled with people who do exactly that because it's kind of what they're they, they're forced to do. They're put in that position. Um, yeah, they have to. You're totally right. It is, you know, it is something to give the power to the people, and then to think about what is alternative music, what is pop punk, what is emo, what is what is any of that. I mean, there's a moment in time where that genre was really dominated by radio, and now there's less alternative radio stations in America than ever before. I know it's dying out. Right and, now. and the records that they're playing are primarily gold recurrent records. They're super yep. old. Yep. Mm-hmm. It, it is. They're essentially destroying themselves, right? Um, is I I think the future is like a pop alternative, you know, multi genre format that is really what people want. I think the future is two songs in one. You know, mm. I think it's. I think that's honestly the future of music is. We have stuck to a structure for so long: verse, pre-chorus, chorus, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, bridge, chorus, done. Yeah, right. I think the future of music now is we're, we're so stimulated. You take two songs that you love and you try to turn it into one. And I think that's like where we're going. Where does does genre? Is that how you? If someone says, "What kind of music do you like?" Do you actually jump to? A genre now, or do you say a handful artists. of artists? Yeah, artists, 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 totally, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Right. So essentially, you know, again, I see the good in all of it. So it's like, I think that we're at this rebuilding point, and I think that we're putting it in the hands of extremely intelligent people, the young generation. And a lot of this album is talking about um, what the older generation continues to feed this younger generation. Like uh, on the opposite side, like my new album is called God Save the Teen, right? <laughs> Obviously a play on God Save the Queen, Sex Pistols song, um, all of that, flipping it to God Save the Teen. Um, there is this constant idea of perfection right now. This constant idea of creating an identity for yourself. When you do these things, as you get older, it's going to make you scared to evolve you know we are complicated human beings once you create this life for yourself of who you are to the public it's going to get really scary down the line to try to evolve and to try to show other aspects of your life it's so true and and i also just like i i don't man i, I see it all the time i have been a part of it you know these filters that you're given Right. That is a that is a new thing. Let's say like when did they introduce all these filters to the story? I don't know, maybe like three, four years ago, something Dude, like that. It has changed the way we see ourselves. Well, now people think they're ugly without them. Yeah. And that's a really hard thing to think. But, but we also equate our self-worth to likes. Yes. Uh, putting a number on your on on your relevance. And Ugh. It's it. That, and that's what. OK, so like I am not being a preacher for down with this, down with that. I'm simply trying to be a messenger of what that is, you know? Like, stop. Try try not to use them. Try not to use the filter. Like, enjoy the way you look. Enjoy those wrinkles on your face and, and these lines right here and all that stuff. Like, enjoy that. Celebrate that. That's what I want. So I want to be a messenger right now with just, like, what culture looks like and being like, let's look at how to rebuild it. How do you take that larger message and then balance it with records like Avril's song, which is still yeah. totally personal? Yeah, I love that. I think it's so great. Like, my favorite artist of all time is Bob Dylan, okay? He has songs of the names of the person that he was with at the time. And I'm like, yo, why is that a lost art right now of being so, so personal? 
And like I had I had pushback from people on my team. Man, like if it's her song, how are other people gonna relate to it? And no, I'm like, actually, people relate in specificity even more. Yeah, they get. And yeah. it's the mo- It's the total. It's the total. The human condition, like reset. Uh-huh. It happens right there when you think like, okay, to be relatable, I gotta say something that every single person can relate to. In order to be relatable, you and have to be it, real. Yeah, yeah. And then the most sincere, the most vulnerable you can get. Totally. That's how someone goes. Okay, like, yeah. My son is specifically talking about the person that he is with, but I know all these feelings that he's talking about. Thus, now I relate even harder, and I just think that's so beautiful, man. I think that is, I think that's a lost art. People, people being afraid right now to be that finger on the pulse. It is scary to share, yeah. Because, like, I think in a sea of oversharing, which you see when you look all around, obviously, people. I don't know. Like people also still at the same time, some people pull back because they see it as just too much and then letting too many people in. But at the same time, like you can balance both. Have you heard of the rubber band theory? Do you know what that is? Uh, like I, I don't want to speculate, but I maybe. what is it? Okay. So say you have a rubber band around your hands like this, right? Uh-huh. So two things can happen. If one moves this way, you can move with it like this. Or if you keep moving like this, eventually it snaps back. Yeah. So the rubber band theory speaks specifically to like uh, an artist or an influencer that's oversharing their life. So they pull back. If you go like this and they get further away from you, you try to catch up. You try to go, oh, come back, come back. Let me share, share, share. But if you kind of be try try to in this day and age provide a little bit of mystery and you let it go out and out. Oh, they're drifting from you. They're drifting from you. You're not posting. You're not doing this. All of a sudden, when you do decide to, let's say you're putting out a new album, boom, it snaps back. And it's even harder than chasing the audience. And um, I thoroughly believe in that. I, th- I You know, like, yeah, do I need to promote? 100%. So I'm going to find a creative way that makes me feel like super validated as an artist to do that, which is what I did with this new album, creating like this little short for each song rather than um, rather than getting in front of the camera. Here's the new hook. Here's yeah. here's this. And I mean, sing it to you and hopefully you like it. And, uh, you know, you took on a real challenge. Yeah, it was a real <laughs> yeah. challenge. bro. It was a real challenge. I'm so overly ambitious. Like um, for anyone out there who doesn't know what we're talking about, like so there's 12 songs on my album. The 12 days leading up to this album, I have released a um, a short for each song um, where I take the lyrics and I speak them in a form of poetry. I take stems from the song, stems for anyone out there, are uh, each individual piece of music from the song that comes together in one stereo track at the end. So these are pieces that you really don't even get to hear. Mm. Like, it's so fun to pick apart a song and be like, listen to this string part that no one's ever even going to notice. And uh, I take that and I sound design it all. And... um, it was an extreme challenge, and I'm so overly ambitious that I was like, dude, we can get this all done in two days. No, it's been like I shot one yesterday in Aspen. Whoa. You know, yeah. It's been every day, um, you know, really, really trying to, like, just be inventive with it. You thought you were going to gang shoot 12 <laughs> in two days? I literally did. Maybe that's how I convinced the people that work with me to work with me. Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm overly ambitious, that's always. That's crazy. Yeah, but... um. But it's made me feel really validated every day to promote this album because um, speaking of like the rubber band theory and all that, like this is me trying to um, really have the audience snap back, you know. You're giving them something that's genuine that has your 100% being in it, I'm assuming, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and it's, it's also... Um, it's also... Being fearless, you know, yeah. there's no negotiation when it comes to me making art. Like, I am always trying to, you know, there, there's a beauty of being right on time. There's just an absolute beauty with it. My last album, Internet Killed the Rockstar, I was like right on time for, for essentially maybe one of the first times in my career, you know. And I think that that gave me the most success that I've ever had. Um but I, in my heart, I'm totally okay with the veil of narcissism is being lifted. Um, I'm totally okay with trying to be ahead, yeah. you know. And that's what I wanted to bring back into this album was like doing something that is pretty scary to do. Not having singles on your album is scary. 
But do you not feel like any of these songs can be singles? Because every they, single, yeah, one. they can. <laughs> every single one, bro. I, I literally do. I mean, I feel like every single one of them um, stands stands on its own. But at the end of the day, um, I miss the event. I know you do too. Yeah. You miss the event of an album. Oh, yeah. And when you have heard four songs on the album, all of a sudden, that's like whatever. You listen to the album. You get to track three. You got heard this skip. Ooh, that just that that burns when you're trying to feel a body work. You get to track five, skip, heard it, great song, totally. heard it, um, and I've experienced that so much because I am such a music nut, man. At at nine p.m. on Thursday night, every Thursday, <laughs> New Music Friday, I go to New Music Friday, bro. <laughs> and if I don't get through. 75 percent of the list like, oh wow i feel bad yeah yeah sometimes they get they get Respect. 30 sometimes they get 30 seconds out of me but like i'm, I'm going in like yeah. i'm really like listening to everything when someone drops a new album i'm tuning in i'm listening to the oh, wow. album and uh you know my favorite artists um i listen to their album and i'm like man i've heard four of these songs uh. I miss that event, man. I miss Tuesdays going to the store. I would skip school. I'd roll around and just be like, oh, my God, I'm feeling this, like, body of work. And um, so that's what I wanted to give to anyone that listens to me. You're bringing back something that's been lost. I really hope so. I really hope so. Did you get a lot of pushback on that, or did everybody on your team think that was a good idea? At first, everyone was like, that's not how you do it. And I was like, perfect wonderful let's go yeah. again like i enjoyed the moment of being right on time i thought that was great um but i missed being able to push myself artistically and be like i want to just do something that i don't see people doing i really like that and um and i do have an amazing label that i'm with called big noise which is run by a guy named John Cohen who used to work for Vagrant Records. Sick. And a guy named Nick Gross, who's this young super entrepreneur who also plays drums in the band Girlfriends. And my favorite producer in the whole world, singer of Goldfinger, John Feldman. Um, cool. John Feldman was immediately like, yes, no singles, shake it up, huh. let's go. Loved it was just like i mean he's a punk he's a real punk at heart and he was like that's that's punk rock let's go whose voice do you hear when there's silence oh oh um what a great question i have a song called eyelids where it talks about that um as of right now uh i hear my girl's voice yeah i really do yeah so one of the ways you know you're in love yeah 100 percent um, I think when you become number two, that's, that's when you know you're in love. And, uh, I fight, I fight with myself all the time to be like, no, 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 no. You gotta be selfish. You got, and I think the word selfish has been so abused over time. I think that when you hear the word selfish, you're immediately like asshole. Selfish is bad, but it's mm. like, man, if you, if you haven't put yourself at the top of your list and helped yourself, your help is thus that much less to the world. Um, you really need to put yourself first uh, at some point in your life. Now, does that last forever? No. I'm sure when you have a child that is uh, innately supposed to switch yeah. up, when you have a pet that switches up, um, when you're in love, I've found that in this relationship, it's really switched up. I'm with someone that I actually uh, truly learned from and who has helped me um, grow and stay strong. You know, this last... Um, this last, a good portion of the last year has been the biggest challenge for me to stay sober. It has been the biggest challenging time. What's been the hardest? What, 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 what Are there factors that are present recently that haven't been before? Or? Yeah, yeah. Um, I would say that the high of proving things to myself has now worn off. I've mm. proved to myself that I can be sober. So I'm, I'm an addict. I am an addict, and, and I was an addict before I did my first line. I was an addict before I took my first drink, you know. I'm addicted to things. That's, that's, how, I, that's how I operate in life. Um, so there was, like, this insane high of proving to myself, like, wow, like, I'm doing it, man. Like, I said I was going to do it, and I haven't relapsed one mm -hmm. time, you know. I said I was going to do it, and I'm doing it, and it made me feel so powerful, 
you know, and empowering myself. Um, but that that is worn off a little bit. And now it's become a more of a serious, serious challenge to me um, that is hard. It's really hard. You know, I uh, I've never up until this year, I've never been in a room of people drinking or doing drugs where I was like, man, would I be having more fun if I was doing that? And that's happened recently. Yeah. Yeah, just being totally That's scary. honest. No, I get it. Yeah, and and I mean, you're not really you're not really supposed to say those things out loud when you're in this community of cleaning up your life, you know. Um, but I'm happily in open book. Thank you. You know, yeah, and and uh, so and so you know, any anyone out there dealing with those things, those issues, like I'm I'm right there with you, and um, you know, at the end of the day, I'd be dead. I'd be dead right now. You know. I got out of the game close close to right before this big fentanyl hit, you know, and I, I would 100% be dead. So. What do you do when you're tempted in those situations? Do you have to leave or? No, I don't. I, I don't leave. I still push myself to, to be okay with it, you know. Like, I, when, for instance, when I go on tour, it's not like a dry tour, you know. I'm not like no one in my group can drink or party, you know. Um, but. What what I'm doing recently and now is really um, considering my future, you know, really considering the fact that, like, I I actually have this deep desire to grow old. You know, I really do. Like, I want to be a grandpa. I want to have kids. I want to have wrinkles all over my face, like all that. So I'm starting to, like, really think about tomorrow, you know, which there's this there's this like whole idea in this about like being present and being in the moment. There's this great quote that's like you think about the future, um, you get anxiety, you think about the past, you get depressed. So be present. That's how you do these things. Um, I've actually found that I'm really starting to think about my future more than ever. It, it's motivating, isn't it? Yeah. Bob Dylan's in his 80s and he's he's still releasing records. Yeah, like, that's, that's, that's dude, what Neil I Neil Young was right there I fucking know. a few weeks ago. What a <laughs> yeah. great interview. He's talking about watch people. I'll tell you, I watch everything. Yo, he's talking about how he makes these songs, yeah. walking through the woods, just humming into a seat. He's, like, well, he's like, I have this flip phone and I'm just like recording this. I'm like, Neil Young, you're the coolest, bro. But by the way, like somebody else who's also gone through sobriety over the years too. Right. Like, it is, and... and Thank when I say thank you for sharing because it is a very real, it's a very real conversation that should be had, and um, I think in, in talking about it actually releases the stigma of it, and maybe could help somebody who's going through it. Uh, you know, absolutely, man. I I romanticized death my whole life. You know, like the twenty seven club is tattooed on my arm. I got that tattooed when I was like eighteen years old, seventeen years old. But what changes? To, what what changes your outlook? Is it is it Avril? Is it is it family? Is it the want to build a family and build roots that are bigger than just you? You know, I'll never forget when um, I was about maybe three weeks into cleaning up and getting sober, and I went on a family trip. Um, me, my sister, and my mother, who I was raised by, I love y'all. My sister in the room and mom, son, I know you're going to watch this. Um, we would go on, like, family trips, like, you know, we try to like once a year. Right. And, um, my mom and my sister have seen me be insane. Right. Like my father, rest in peace. He was crazier than I could ever have been. You know, he died from alcoholism. Right. And like, he was a motorcycle riding bad out of hell, crazy, crazy human being. And, uh, I got that into my DNA a hundred percent addicted to chaos, you know? And, uh, so we went on this trip to Iceland three weeks after I had gotten sober. And, and like I said, they had seen me go through everything. And I'll never forget my mom being like, I have my son back, you know? And like, <laughs> I don't want to get him oh. I can't believe the Zack Sang studio. It's okay to cry. <laughs> um, and uh, and that, that changed me in that moment, you know? That changed me 100%. To the point where it's kept you on this path today yeah in a lot of ways man and like i have i have amazing you know mentor in my life john feldman he he uh he's like one of the people that i call when i'm feeling a certain way and um and and uh and then of course avril i mean with avril like she's you know 
she only knows me being sober and she's a hundred percent like you know i don't think we'd be together if you were your crazy old self does that scare you uh yeah yeah it does you know it um it's scary but it's absolutely gratifying because like i'm with a goddess you know that's that's how i look at it so yeah how often do you think back to that moment in iceland with your mom all the time i can see it right now in my head you know and like I can, I can hear my mom's tears. I can hear. I mean, dude, I went when I was younger. I I I started touring when I was sixteen or seventeen years old. You know, um, full time touring since eighteen. And I would, I, I think I went to almost like almost two years without talking to my mom before. You know, wow. At least a year. I don't know. My memory get a little get a little crazy through those times, but. Um, you know, my mom and my sister shut them out of my life completely. You know, um, there was a there was a a real incident in my life that that happened um, about a year before I cleaned up, and at that point, I completely went off the rails. Something really uh, deep happened um, with me and my father. You know, um, and uh, I had to kick down the door and, and find him um in a in a in a bad place and essentially save his life um and at that moment i blocked out everyone in my life and you know everyone was worried about me and my mom flew out and you know basically tried to get me in rehab and all that kind of stuff and and i i look back at those moments and um i don't want to put the people that i love through that again i want to be here and i don't want to um Man, I want to live. I want to live. That's. Do you feel like you'd be the artist and the person you were today? You are today if those moments didn't happen. Absolutely not. Like as shitty as they were, and as it's the movie. Yeah, is is etched it's, into your. I mean, they're they're etched into who you are as a person. Yeah, as as torturing, and um, dark as they are, uh. Life is a movie, man, and I got some. I got. I got some happiness. I got some sadness. I got some pain. I got some love. I've got a real arc, and there, there is, there is something within film, um, called the hero's journey, and it's like, totally right when the caterpillar thinks that his life is over, phew, turns into a butterfly, <laughs> <laughs> and it's like that. That's you know, I thought I was dead, and came out a better person, and came out. Um, to be this deep into my career and finding this is all I wanted to do, you know, since the second that dude, I'm not kidding. Since the second that my sister showed me who Hanson was <laughs> and I saw this like <laughs> nine year old dude playing drums to an arena, I was like, mama, I want a drum set. And since that moment when Mbop was popping, <laughs> I was like, that's what I want to do for the rest of my life. And, uh, and, and to be this, deep into my life and this deep into my career man some people get three years some people get two years some people get five years man i've had like 17 years yeah and it's really just beginning mm -hmm. i've that's what i want i want to keep adding to this does how you make music change since avril enters your life like one love changes your perspective yeah it has to yeah and yeah. then also she has an incredible ear oh yeah oh, probably yeah. one of the best like you know out yeah there. yeah um well, I'll tell you what, I feel a little less obliged to sing out loud in the car when I'm riding with her. I'll tell you that much, man. Like, talk about perfect pitch. Like, you yeah, know. She's like really. It's incredible. It's incredible to be around. It's incredible to um, be with someone that'll grab a guitar in the morning and sit at the piano and, and write songs and, and all that. Um, but but artistically, I thoroughly enjoy writing about what's actually happening in my life, you know? Um, maybe there'll be a day where I make, like, a storytelling album where I'm just, like, you know, because I like to write. I write books. I write movies. Mm -hmm. Like, I like to write. So maybe there'll be a day where I'm, like, all right, let's, like, make a fantasy album. But I really, really enjoy talking about my real life. So, like, you know, um, this album is so much of a love letter, you know, a lot of it is a love letter um, rather than a breakup record. You know, it's the sequel to Internet Killed the Rockstar in all ways. And um, the best sequels 
if there are any, because a lot of the sequels, we know what they, they do, the original. <laughs> Except Mighty Ducks, baby! <laughs> um, you know, the best sequels are the ones that uh, continue the story with a whole different um, perspective. Is revenge healthy? Uh, revenge is, is, is healthy when it's also paired with redemption, you know? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Redemption on what side? The person who's seeking Written. revenge or the one who's on the receiving end? Living well is the best revenge. Okay. So, yeah. so, uh, fuck yeah. Knowing that you're doing, uh, better than where you were, that's like the redemption and revenge. So that's the sweetness of it. Absolutely. That song musically sounds great. Yes. It reminds me sounds so Y'all good. are the first ones to hear this it's album. Awesome. So I'm really enjoying this, everybody. <laughs> that's right really now. great. They've heard my new songs. God save the team. <laughs> What was it like getting, I mean, working with Avril on Shelter? Uh, it was amazing because that was, that was a song that, um, that was a song that came from a specific incident that happened. Um, you know, talking about the, uh, the dark places my mind can go. Um, that was like a specific moment that happened. Um, the lyrics in it talking about when I'm feeling like shit, when I drive off a cliff, when I hate my own skin, you take care of me. Um, finding shelter and uh, a warm, safe place in this world with uh, with another human being is extremely, um, you're extremely fortunate if you find that, to say the least. And uh, that that song was written through an incident where she pulled me away from the cliff that I was about to jump off of, you know? Um, and I made that song, and she heard it, because she's the first one that I play my music to now. And uh, she was just like, really, really great song. Like, really, this is her words, amazing song. Beautiful, wonderfully written. And uh, she wasn't on it at first, you know? Um, and she was like, basically... Okay, here's the real story. I was trying to get the Goo Goo Dolls on that song, right? Really? Yeah, and it was about to happen, and then it didn't. And I was really upset. And she was like, I think that's maybe the universe telling me that I should get on it. Ooh. Yeah. And and that that's how it went down. Um, I feel like putting that into a song, that moment, that experience that you both, I mean, that you both shared, and, I mean, clearly life-changing moment. Yeah. Putting that into a song is, like, the most vulnerable thing a human being can do together. Yeah, and, and, and it really... It has, um, it's a song that has a beginning, a middle, and an end. It has a conclusion. It has a start. It talks about, I'm swerving into oncoming traffic and you grab the wheel, you know? It talks about the, uh, the dark places that you go to and then someone saving you, you know? And I think that's beautiful for anyone in life, whether it's a song that saves you, a person that saves you, um, you know, a, co a coincidence that isn't real because it's all meant to be saving you and you f you see a sign and you're like, oh, yeah, okay. I've had all those things happen to me. Mm. Um, and I think that song can really touch people in that way. Why do you originally want the Goo Goo Dolls on it? She's my favorite voice in music. Uh, dude, Iris is really good, obviously. That's like the most basic fucking answer, but... Yeah, I mean, one of my favorite voices in music, one of, one of the um, great songwriters of our time... And when I think back to maybe one of the first times I can remember riding in a car and hearing a song on the radio that made me feel understood mm. as a kid. Um, I grew up in Bloomington, Minnesota. I originally, like we were talking at the, at the beginning, um, my, my parents got divorced when I was six. We moved around a lot. I'm talking... Every first grade was in one school, second grade was in one school, third grade was in one school, fourth no grade friends. was in one school. You really, like, have to rebuild your life every year. And, and like, I love my mom so much uh, for doing that because I, I know that she knew it was hard on us as kids, but she was also like, I'm trying to give you a better life, mm -hmm. you know? We started in, like, you know, we started completely broke, completely, completely broke, getting school lunches from my grandparents, you know? Because my mom was just, like, started from nothing, dude. Like, when they got divorced, they started from nothing. My mom worked for my dad. When they got divorced, my dad fired her, and she had nothing, 
you know, she was given, she got to keep the house in marriage and then the house got foreclosed on because she couldn't pay for it. So we like immediately went to, um, tiny little apartment. And, uh, so my mom while moving around was like, I'm going to, I think you should get into sports because then you'll be around people that you'll make friends with, you know? And for a while that worked out. Um, but like I said, once I found music, it was, it was the total change. It was, it was getting rid of all that and being the outcast in town. It's stop Every trying to time. fit in. Yeah. Stop. I stopped trying to, to fit in and make friends. So I found, I found Blink. I found drive through records. I found new found glory. I found all these bands that were, um, at that time, the absolute counterculture, you know? Um, and that turned me into the outcast in my town, walking through the hallways of school with your headphones on, wearing tight girl jeans, dyeing your hair half and half. I did not wear a backpack. I carried a briefcase. I was weird, dude. <laughs> and 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 I and I had no friends in my city. I was skateboarding. This was the time when, like, I mean, dude, speaking of Avril, dude, when Skater Boy dropped, it was finally like, all right, skaters are cool. But before that, dude, it was like, I, I'll never forget, like, rough. yo, throwing sh stuff at you, yeah. calling you a dirty. That was the word in my town. You're a dirty. And uh, and going back to what we were talking about, hearing Iris was like, all right, there's a place for me. Uh -huh. There are, you know. But, but, but is that like, you look at that and you go, like, you as a human being end up isolating yourself from everything around you in terms of like school and society and like your community, but you find understanding in music, but also you're witnessing people just, you're, you're not a part of it, but you're watching, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Do you feel like watching helped you get like a better understanding of like, or at least apply something to your records? Oh yeah. I studied my heroes yeah. completely through and through. Um, you know, the beautiful part of, about sharing a story is giving both sides of it so you can help shape a better future so when you get to look at all your heroes and study them you get to say these are all the things that i love and these are all the things that i'm not going to do um but you know having to go out and leave my city you know i was a scene kid man so what we did was like we went to shows that that were like 50 kids watching like hardcore straight edge bands and learning to mosh and all that <laughs> For real, and 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 having to go out and find your friends, having to go out and find people that you related to, not people that you were forced to relate with. You know, it really taught me um, how to walk into a room and and uh, and like share my energy to 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 try to be like, here's why you should again narcissism maybe bleeding through here. Here's why you should pay attention to me. You know, because you feel so unseen. Does it fuel your delusional uh, confidence? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. The number one field of my delusional confidence was um, mentality to reality was the secret. When I found the secret and the law of attraction. Oh, bro, changed my life too. Changed my life. I mean, and I'm sure when you watched it, right, you're talking about the secret in general. Yeah. When yeah, you yeah, watched yeah. it, you're like, I've been thinking that. This whole time. Mm -hmm. And now I have these people that are telling me that I'm right. Finally. And all of a sudden you're like, dude, you can, for anyone out there, like you can change your life overnight. You can wake up a different person. And that's completely what I did. I felt so, um, I had so many people telling me no. No, 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 no. Like the whole one in a million thing. And then you like watch The Secret and you're like, hell yeah, I'm the one. <laughs> I'm the one out of the million. Great. I'm looking around and I don't see any other ones. I'm gonna be that one. And uh and that that's what fueled me to really believe like what I'm thinking in my head is what I'm asking for. And like to anyone out there, it's the most simple, simple ideas. Like the universe is unbiased. So if you're saying, I don't want blank, I don't want blank, you're actually telling the universe the subject matter, not the I want or I don't want. So if you're thinking about the things you don't want, you are accidentally asking for those things. So what it's telling you is train your mind to think about the things that you want and only think about those things. And it's a super big challenge, but it is totally doable. When did you realize you had delusional confidence? Or do you even really believe that you're delusionally confident? He, uh, great question. Am I delusional? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because... I'm, 
I still at this point in life, there's nothing telling me that I can't get to where I've always dreamed of. Mm. There is still nothing telling me that it's not possible. And like, I don't care how many times someone wants to tell me to grow up. I don't care how many times someone wants to say act your age. I don't care about any of those things. Like I said, my hero is Bob Dylan. He's in his 80s, man. And he's still doing this. And, like, I want to be that. I want to be at my biggest moment ever on my deathbed. You know, I, 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 I truly believe that can happen. That's, I, I, it could. I don't think that's delusional. Yeah, I mean, well, a lot, you know what? A lot of people do think that there's a timeline on, on, you know, success is a dangerous word to to try to define. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people do think that there's like a timeline for it, and that if you haven't, again, dangerous word, made it by a certain time, um, that you should give up. I think that's. I think that. I think that is a, a common theme in this world. Oh, society, yeah, definitely tells you Societal, to give up at a certain age. But consistency is what determines uh, those who make it and those who don't, I think, sometimes. 100%. And if I can have any influence on anyone out there that tunes into this or that listens to my music or any of those things, it's like don't let yourself be confined by an age limit mm. or a time limit. Did you do? Uh, there's a song called Iris on the album, right? Yeah, it's, it's the Google. Dolls it's the cover. Google Dolls cover. Yeah, like, but like, so, what is the process of clearing that? Is that hard? Oh no, you just get, you just give up all publishing and all everything. <laughs> so you make no money on it. Yeah, okay, yeah, got yeah, it, got it. yeah, yeah, yeah. For the sake of storytelling. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's. Oh, go ahead. No, no, no. You go. Ahead. So what I love about your cover is you didn't try to do too much. You still kept it Iris, but you put yeah. your own little mm. twist on it. Yeah, it's, it's. uh that register to me where you're low in the verse and you belt in the chorus like that's my um that's like my my sweet spot that i found within music is being able to man i'm not a great singer to anyone out there like i'm not professionally trained i, I it's 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 completely emotive you know emotive like i am in the moment, like screaming my lungs out because the words mean something to me, and that's when I really hit it. Um, so, you know, it's a it's a dangerous thing to try to do a cover and and try to quote unquote make it your own. You know, um, I really just God saved the teen. You know, that song saved me as a teen, so I felt it was completely right to include it on this album. Do you decide to cover it and include it after the Goo Goo Dolls? Turn you down for shelter? <laughs> yeah, yeah, completely. I was like, yo, there's going to be a piece of you on this album whether you like it or not, man. Did you get to have a conversation with John Resnick? He's the lead singer, right? Yeah. Um, no, no, not not specifically. It was mm -hmm. through through people, through people. Um, and uh, like I said, I have, like, the utmost respect for that group. So talk about, like, um, continuing to evolve like they started as like a punk band in cbgb's and then there's like <laughs> this great story where they they made iris they're making it for a movie they make it for city of angels they they create this song and uh they go into the studio to record it and the producer's like we're gonna put strings here and they like look at each other and they're like once we put strings on our song like we're never going back you know this is where we become this kind of band Mm -hmm. right and they they made that transition and you think it was the right decision yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah those are my favorite songs my yeah. favorite songs are everything that that was you know in that period um love the early stuff too but like and yeah that, dizzy that, up the girl that's the album it's on right yeah yeah that has like black balloon and slide on it and that's what black balloon they... dude a song about someone addicted to heroin that sounds so beautiful the dichotomy of mm. life like oh my god mm -hmm. yeah so ahead Absolutely. Yeah, like incredibly ahead. And just incredible, incredible songwriter, you know. Wow. So this album, by the way, you can listen to it. God Save the Teen. We're going to put a link in the description below. Also, all of Mod Sun's music, the whole discography available on Amazon Music. Uh, Royal and the Serpent on this album. Yes. They're friends of yours now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So how does that work? Are you in the studio? Do you send them a record when it's done? Uh, she came into the studio 
what really, you know, what really like did it for me is uh, I went to one of her shows recently. It was at the Troubadour. Um, saw her perform, uh, and I just saw a um, kinship between what she does and what I do, where it's like the performance is is like the last time you're ever gonna perform. It doesn't matter what room you're in, how many people are there. This was a sold out show for her, by the way. It was amazing, um, but it's everything to you and you show that right when you get on stage and um i had this song sos where i was just like it it to me it's a it's like a haunting kind of song it's very haunting uh in the the landscape of the music and the lyrics and she has like this wonderfully haunting voice and i could just really hear on it so she came to the studio um she wrote the verse while we were sitting there, and yeah, it just it turned out great. How are records starting for you? Are they coming from life and lyrics, or are they starting with like production? What is it? Yeah, it'll start with well, okay. So really, what I always try to do is, you know, I've done my uh, ten thousand hours of writing, mm. right? Like I've done the I've journals filled when I was doing my ten years of of really like rapping and hip hop. It was all written bars, all that. Um, and for the last, I would say, like, three years, well, I guess, like, maybe, like, four years, but definitely the last two albums, Internet Killed the Rockstar and God Save the Teen, it's all stream of conscious, completely right. all stream of conscious. So whether it's, um, you know, one guitar that's that's happening or John Feldman and me build up this kind of orchestration of a couple things going on um it it pushes me to say something and it's all me completely doing everything i can to um not try to be in ownership of what happens i literally want nothing more than to feel like i'm being handed something you know um i want the song to be waiting for me at the microphone um and handed to me that day and I totally believe in all of that kind of energy and, and being connected to some kind yeah. of source. And uh, I don't know what I'm going to say when I start saying it. It's just unpredictable, right? So yeah, some days you get it and some days you can't. Yeah. I mean, my whole goal is to go in with nothing and leave with something. Um, and whether it's something that gets released or I listen to, listen to it by myself in my car for the next 20 years and that's it. Uh I like having something that wasn't there, you know? I like, you know what I thoroughly enjoy is, like, investigating in emotion. Mm. Like, I love to be like, this is what this is making me feel like. Um, I'm going to hunt for the magic. Like, I literally pretend that I'm, like, a hunter, like, hiding behind a bush, like, picturing magic in the distance and how I can, like, capture it. But if you mine. enter a studio, you have to get a song at the end of the day. That's how Something. I work. Yeah. yeah, that's how I work. That's how I work. And, and fortunately, that's how John Feldman likes to work. Is He's like, you know, to me, like, silence is the devil. Like, for <laughs> real, you know? Because, um, the, the, you know, that's... Silence is... Idle hands are the devil's playground. You I know totally what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so if, if, uh, if, if I go in there, it's like, make some noise... And let me just go yell and sound like an absolute fool. You know, my my biggest tip for like anyone out there, not just musicians, especially musicians and artists, but like anyone in the world is remove the bone of embarrassment from your body. But that's hard depending on who you're in the room with. It's very hard, but it's not hard if you let me put the mic away. Go like this, get in front of the mic, go. I'm blah, 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 blah. <laughs> It makes it a lot less hard to like make a fool of yourself and then start from zero. That was a nice icebreaker, yeah. That's Good. just that. That's what I believe in, bro. It's like I don't think that I'm like, you know, I'm not in control of of. Uh, I'm not gonna be an opera singer. I'm not gonna be Kendrick Lamar. I'm not gonna be that type of artist. That's like, look at how great I am. I want to be, like, looked at, like, look at how free I am, you know? Truly. Is that captured in this album? Yeah. Absolutely. It's 100% captured in this album. Should we listen to it top to bottom? Yes. In order? 
hundred percent in order. You know that in in order in loudspeakers, front to back, um, allow the story to be told. Like I said, there is there is a start, middle, and an end. The conclusion on this album, the last I think like minute and a half of the last song, "Delusional Confidence," is the pretty much embodiment of what my message is to the world at this moment. It's like a long-winded poem at the end. Link in the description below. Yeah. Click it. Yeah. How fun was it to record Courtney Fucked Kurt? Yo. It sounds like one of those like hard, most... cool punk songs like The Casualties or something. <laughs> yes. Thank you, bro. I love you. I love you. Um, yeah, that was that was a really, really fun song to make. Also like a um a real idea that I think should be spread, which is just like the romanticization of death, you know. Um it, it talks about all of that, you know, which embodies like a lot of the addiction to chaos that I had growing up for a long time was looking at these people that I believe in my heart didn't want to die on the day they died, you know, um, or would maybe, maybe change it, you know, would maybe change that if they could. And uh, I want the I want the the generations that follow me to really want to live like I was talking about, you know. So I think it's important to to find the right heroes to look up to. Yeah, you mentioned stop romantic romanticizing death like twice. Why do you think people do that? Oh man, um, I think it may start with Van Gogh, <laughs> like yeah. the Van Gogh syndrome, the idea that. You've got to be a tortured artist to create something beautiful um, and moves on throughout history. The, You know, there's that great quote that it's like, we're all in the gutter, but some of us are looking up at the stars, you know? Um, I think that's, that's the side of life that I think is important is to have a resolution of optimism and uh, finding the beauty in the world. But yeah, I think there is a giant idea in this world that to be great, you have to be tortured. You know, you can't be in love to write these great songs. Like, they all need to be coming from a place of of being hurt and in pain. And uh, yeah, I think there's another side. I think that, that, that the other side can be found just as easily. The other side is like, but does it yield the same product? Great question. Does it yield the same product? Um, I think that is uh, that you can be saved by both sides. You know, I do understand that someone sharing their pain can thus, you know, a sad song can make you happy. A happy song can make you sad. I understand the um, the duality in that. Um, but I think there's an importance to tell the other side. You know, I think there's a real a real importance now more than ever. I think maybe you guys can agree that we're seeing like a mass depression maybe more than ever oh, kind of yeah. happening in society right now um so i think what better time than to try to talk about the other side god save the team click the link uh, back on january 3rd you shared a video of yourself in the booth crying yeah what song were you making single mothers okay Single Mothers, a song for my mom um, and a song for all the single mothers out there. Uh, they deserved a song, mm -hmm. you know. And um, me, me and John Feldman were making that song that day, which he completely relates to 100%. And, like, I think it was, well, the opening lyric is, I had a dad, but a woman taught me how to be a man. I mean, just starting, that, that was where it started, you know. I actually, a lot of my, a lot of my, it, again, in, in my personal idea, a lot of my greatest songs really come to me while I'm dreaming, you know? And that song came to me while I'm dreaming. The, There's no one tougher than a single mother. That part came to me in a dream. I, like, woke up out of my dream and I voice noted it. And I came to the studio the next day and I was like, yo, I want to make a song. My last song had a, or my last album had a song for my dad. This album, I was like, I'm, I'm, I want to make a song for my mom. And, uh, 
that part came to me when when I said the first lyric, I had a dad, but a woman taught me how to be a man. Um, we were both like, okay, like that's that's pretty that was pretty heavy. Like it's pretty heavy. And then when I got to the part where it was like, uh, she would cry while we would sleep and never showed us she was weak. We both were just like, yo, that's as like heartbreaking, you know. Um, it might have been the first time that I really, you know, I had. I th- there's a voice note of my mom on the song and like I had like this whole conversation with her because I think it was maybe the first time that I really asked her like she made me think that it was so easy you know she really did I think that's what a lot of single mothers do totally so they really make you think that everything's all good and um is it their duty absolutely not it is not their duty but they're being superheroes by doing that mm-hmm. um and uh it might have been the first time where I really got like introspective and and asked her questions like what was it like to do that and she finally like opened up a little bit with me and was just like it's the hardest thing ever it's like so hard to wear this mask of everything's okay but really really being in pain not only from a broken marriage but having nothing when you start and really being scared, like having a fear that those choices you made to marry this person, then to have kids with this person, you brought these kids into this world, like that decision might have really been a horrible thing. Totally. It's so scary to think that. And then to be like, but I am going to take charge. I am going to... Tra- there's a lyric she traded her life for her kids mm-hmm. it's what single mothers do all of a sudden their dreams don't matter anymore um and they give their whole life to their children i'm talking about single parents in general but my personal experience is a single mother um and she had no help you know she had no help she never got child support she uh she had to completely trade everything that she had to give myself and my sister the life that we have and then furthermore when I decided to not fit in with the other kids around me then it gets really scary you know then it gets really scary like she supported me she drove me to my shows I was in band since I was 13 years old you know she was the only one in the crowd she's driving me to play these shows and she's like all right yo you're choosing like a really really like hard path you know, to believe in yourself, to be a musician and to be an artist and to be this one in a million that you say you are, like you're choosing a really hard path. And she supported me to the very end. She bet on you too. Yeah. Yeah. What what is it like to win for her? Not just for you, but also (laughs) then to play that song for her. Uh, Dude. Oh man. She started, she, when I played it for her, she, um, you know, she broke down in tears when I posted this little short the other day um, talking about the words and, like, watching a home video of me and my mom. Like, she just sent me this text. She's like, I'm a wreck right now. She's like, I can't believe that you would grow up to be this person that would then be, <laughs> be like, fearless enough to, like, write this song for his mom. And, like, why would you want to share that with the world? Like, why would you want to do that for me? Like, she just... I don't know, man. Dude, my sister is my tour manager and helps with PR. Like, she works with me. She lives out here in California now. Like, my mom is, like, my biggest inspiration. Like, I'm the young young one in the family. I'm the baby of the family. And, and, uh, And having no dad, I just always felt, like, a responsibility to, like, empower the women in my life, you know, to, like, show them. New studio tears, baby. <laughs> um, to show them that everything that they did for me uh, did not go unnoticed at all. From day one to now. From from my sister having to sacrifice a lot of her life to babysit me when I was a kid. When my mom's at work, you know. She wants to go out and be a teenager and all this. And she has to babysit her little brother. And, and I was a little shit, man. <laughs> like, for real. And... Uh, <laughs> And and my mom sacrificing all her dreams, every one of her dreams, to be able to. <laughs> Sorry, guys. No, I thank you. Sacrificing all her dreams to, 
allow me to live mine. Yeah. That's the greatest sacrifice a human being can make. It's to, to, all I want to do is be of service in this world. And I've seen that from the people that raised me, was being of service, you know? Do you I, ever want to make a family of your own? Yes, so badly. So badly. I can't wait to be a dad. Like, talking about looking at the duality of life, like, I've seen how not to be a dad, you know? And now that's my big goal is I know I will never be a I love you, Father, but like Debbie Dad, you no. know. I'll never be that man. I I just I, I have such like a burning desire to be like the greatest dad ever. You've gotten both an example of what to do and what not to do. Totally, man. Totally. And like, you know, just just you know, one more thing about like what I see in the the life of single mothers is that like you know in my instance my dad when i would see him which was once very very once in a while like when he before he moved out of the state like i'd see him like once a month and then once he moved out of the state i'd see him once every eight years you know but when i would see him he'd try to make everything be like i'm the coolest i'm the coolest man like we have fun when you're with me. When you're at home, you got to do your homework. You got to mm. wake up. But, like, with me, it's fun. And uh, my mom would never say a bad thing about him. You know? No. She would never say a bad thing about him. And I know that she wanted to. I know she wanted <laughs> to be like, dude, like, I'd come home and be like, well, Dad, do this. And, like, he wear a leather jacket. Give me a leather jacket. And I want to wear it. You know what I'm saying? And he was, you know, all, all that stuff. And my mom was just, like, held it. She, she thugged it out so hard and just... Kept it in her chest. And Dude, that's real strength. That's and, and I think that's so many. One, one side of the single parent, I, I, I really see do that a lot for their kids, you know. Yeah. But by the way, like, that's, like, another level. Like, that's to not tarnish the way you see your dad. Yeah. And to keep that image intact and for you to come to your own conclusions. Yeah. So that's, like, really... So respectable and commendable and really uh, the yeah. highest of ground to take. Yeah. Really cool. Yeah. She's she's a hero of mine, man. I mean, your, your mom must be so be. proud to see what you're accomplishing and then you and your sister accomplish together. Yeah. Like, how cool is that for her to watch now? <laughs> uh, it's it's probably one of her finest moments to, to just see that, you know, my like I said, I was a hard kid to deal with. You know, like I got school is not my thing and that's a big thing when you're a kid is if you're failing classes and getting in trouble and getting kicked out of school and all this stuff like that that's uh that's hard for a mother to take on and then for my sister to have to look after me like uh we weren't super close you know to say the least we weren't super close when we were young and uh and then long after like I said I would not talk to my family for years while I'm on the road and I'm like I'm gonna run away and you know, I'm like oh, the beat poets like Jack Kerouac on the road, like changed my life. That was like a story about just like running away from home and just like living in the moment, traveling the world. And uh, and that like bled into me. So to now have this like very close relationship, uh, I think that's like one of my mom's proudest moments. Yeah. And all of that captured on this album. God save the teen. Listen to it. Please listen to Mod Son. Yes, please. It's 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 officially out. It's out. Y'all were the first people to listen to it, and uh, I can sense that we're coming to an end. Even though I don't want to get off this yep. couch, <laughs> because you guys are really, really great at what I you do. You. You're really, really great at this. From me and all the artists out there, like so deeply indebted to the work that you guys do, <sighs> to actually give. The world an interview that will live a hundred years from now, man. Well, thank you. That's really nice of you. You're, I've, I've been holding back years this whole conversation, <laughs> yeah, and now you're gonna make me. Fun, <laughs> yeah. You know, thank you. Yeah. I really appreciate that because I do. Uh, you know, I, I do think real recognizes real, and um, I think uh, I believe in consistency. Even when you think you're talking to no one, you know, and you're playing to no one, you still got to play like you're playing to a stadium of fifty thousand and. You made that point today. I, I, you know, I really respect your honesty, and I, 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 I feel like I, I understand. When, when's your birthday? March tenth. 
Got it. Pisces. Coming up. Yeah. Um, I feel like I really understand you. I feel like I really get you. And I, 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 I felt understood by your music for a while, feel understood by this album, but even hearing this side of you, it's not something that we were able to like really understand and get to, you know, dive into uh, during the Zoom shit, you know? Yeah, I know. I'm so happy to be in person with y'all. I love you for your honesty and your transparency and uh, sharing everything because in doing that, I know it helps people, you know, even in moments where it feels like it doesn't and it's hard to share and it's a heavy burden to carry, it like it really does help people. So, to choose the couch to tell your story is an honor to us always. <laughs> and uh, you giving us any microcosm of your time and energy outside of this room, not talking to us, but like listening or watching or whatever the fuck, that means even that, that means world. Like that is like, you know, thanks. Because sometimes I think we think nobody is, right? Sometimes. No, sometimes I sometimes I come in and I try to convince Dan that there are people watching. Then we see, see your comments. We're like, all right, <laughs> there's 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 there. There. Hey, <laughs> look, one of the greatest things that keeps me going all the time is like, you made one person's favorite thing. That's okay. <laughs> that's, you know, that that's okay. That's the greatest thing in the world. I put out a movie last year, and if it's one person that says that's their favorite movie, that's a success to me, man. And so wh whatever whatever goes on, man, I hope you always know that, like, this is my favorite podcast, I love man. It. I'll be watching it. <laughs> I watch every episode, and I'm going to watch this whole episode my uh, for the rest of my life because this was a really, really special interview for me. Well, so. the first of many uh, in-studio appearances, I hope, and please let me back. Please let me back in here. Final thoughts over there, Daniel. I know you have them. I know you listened to this album numerous times. I thought it was great. I thought it was a phenomenal album. But I want to ask about the cover. It's like a yeah. Last Supper, your Jesus surrounded by your temptations. <laughs> it's a real take on what the Last Supper would look like right now with culture. Okay. There's the idea of, of uh, forced beauty. There's the idea of when an act of violence is happening right now, your first thought is to take out your phone and film it. Um, there's the idea of prescription drugs. There's the idea of how easy it is to get addicted to something. Um, there's the idea of <laughs> robots taking over the world <laughs> in the future. Sure. Um, it all lives on that, that cover. And, and like I said, my whole goal is to be like a messenger, um, for what I see in culture. It is in no way to say, like, this is wrong, this is right. It's just being, like, I am delivering the message of what I see the older generation is feeding to the younger generation and what that could create. I think that with opening up that conversation, that's how you can find a way to rebuild. God save the teen. Listen to it. You need to listen. Tour Link soon. in the description below. <laughs> Tour soon. Tour very soon, yes. It's officially February now. So uh, February 19th, I started tour all across America and four shows in Canada. I'm out from February 19th to April 2nd. April 2nd, I'm in L.A. Please Fuck come, y'all. Yes, Please come. Yes, yes, um, Yeah. Uh, it's it's Sick. it's going to be my best show yet, and I'm also going to uh, dip a little more into my back catalog for people that have been with me for a very long time. That's fun to be able to put a set that's a little bit, you know, deep and you can really span numerous projects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, uh, I am in no way, um, ever trying to, to put my past into the corner. You know, I think one of the, one of the reasons why I enjoy to evolve is like, there's this quote amongst great artists, really like painters in this world that was like every 10 years, um, recreate yourself and what you do. And that's what I've stuck to my whole life. You know, the first 10 years of my life was playing drums in bands. I played drums in a band called Four Letter Lines, Scary Kids, Scaring Kids. Um, the second 10 years of my life was rapping. And this 10 years of my life has been me singing. And the following 10 years of my life, I already know is going to be me with an acoustic guitar and a harmonica. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah. That excites me. See Modson on tour. We'll put a link in the description below so you can buy some tickets as well. Thank you, Mod, for being honest and sharing everything with us today. And I uh, really appreciate you, man. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me, Zach. Saying y'all are uh, y'all are special out here. So please continue doing what you do from the bottom of my heart. From, like I said, from all artists, like it's very rare where you get to have um, almost famous is one of my favorite movies. It's all about the beauty of journalism, man. And, like long live journalism for real. You know, it's very funny that uh, it's, you've definitely never seen the movie. Dan, but you should. I don't watch movies. Bro, watch it tonight. No, just for me, put on Almost Famous. <laughs> you should. 
Because, I'll think about it. You know, Liz Gillies, he's a dear friend of mine who's been doing our show for like, I don't know, maybe 15 years or 14 years now. She's co- said that I remind her of the character in Almost Famous for forever. And I didn't like fully understand it until I watched the movie. And I was like, oh, I kind of, I get it. Yeah, because you've been doing this for, you've, this yeah. has been your passion. Yeah, 16 years. We're gonna 16 this year. years. Yeah. No one, I don't know anyone else that can say that. Yeah. I plan on dying doing this. So when you see me in 30 years and I'm like, oh, it's been 30, Listen, 46 years. Bro, my only goal right now is that we make a deal that we both do this when we're in our like 60s Fuck or 70s, yeah. man. I don't really know if there's anything else I can do. I mean, eventually I think I may lose my voice because I smoke a lot of weed yeah, and I talk a lot. <laughs> Yo, hey, the rasp, the rasp sounds good. No, but like the deeper thing, and then we'll end on this is like I know here on Amazon everything we do gets run through AI so they'll eventually be able to do things and I won't even be here yeah like I know they like they take our shows I don't know if I can we maybe have to edit it out but I found out like like a, a couple months ago that everything we do gets run through AI and then it's emotionally categorized and then from there it's like even more deeply transcribed and like put into boxes so they can craft conversations and shows Without us ever being present. And the whole thing, man, it's like, <laughs> yo, <laughs> history repeats itself. I believe that we're going to get sick of all this. We're going to go back to house phones. The AI I, thing I ain't going to be that. real. I really do think of it. Like, I think we're at this middle point. Is about to hit that tipping point, and we're going to go back to zero, man. I, I Your lips to the universe's ears. <laughs> For real. Can we end on a real high note? Yes. How special was the trip to Paris when you and Afro Ooh. got engaged? Favorite place in the world. Paris is my absolute favorite place in the world. Cafe de Flore is my favorite restaurant in the world. Walking around Père Lachaise, the, the the graveyard there is like one of my favorite activities to do. Strangely enough, um, it was it was uh, it was a moment in my life that I always knew since I was a young person that I was going to propose to my future wife in Paris in front of the Eiffel Tower. And what better way to do it than than in front of something that's going to, fingers crossed, be there forever. Mm -hmm. You know, then you always have that moment that you can go to and be like, remember this. Um, Dream come true, man. The luckiest kid in the world. Mod son. God save the teen. Listen to the album. See the tour. Links in the description below. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being honest. I love you so much. (laughs) Love you back and appreciate you. Mod son, everybody. Beautiful human.